Hello everyone. Uh, welcome you all to this uh, new video. So uh, the VLSI design and testing subject uh, in that we have covered uh, two first two modules that is module one and module two. Module one was about uh, introduction to CMOS circuits. Okay. And we have seen the uh, basic CMOS logic and uh, implementation of CMOS circuits in different different types of uh, uh, technologies. Okay. And also in the second module, we have discussed about MOS transistor theory in detail, its depth studies and all we have done. Okay. So now we are left with the three modules. Okay. So this module is a bit lengthy. After that, module four and five are very, very easy. Okay. You could be, I would be covering those two modules in around uh, six to seven videos. Okay. Combining those two modules. So this module is a bit lengthy. We have two chapters. One is for uh, CMOS process technology. That is the first chapter that... Uh, the model is named after that module 3 CMOS process technology and uh, next chapter is about uh, resistance estimation where we are going to see the uh, capacitance and uh, resistance estimation and its link between the CMOS uh, implementation okay so this is the first chapter CMOS process technology okay so now let us see in detail what and all we are going to study in this module firstly we are going to uh, see some of the uh, we are going to brush up with the silicon semiconductor technology which is used for the manufacturing of this CMOS uh, uh, circuits okay the donors acceptors that is n type and p type uh, uh, are the majority which are the majority charge carriers you are going to see then then we are going to go with the wafer processing okay then we are going to go with the fabrication process of uh, 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 MOS transistor about how the MOS transistor is formed okay the complete fabrication process that we are going to see because that's very important okay yeah so let us start now first is silicon semiconductor technology and overview okay uh, what do you mean by silicon as a semiconductor as you know that silicon is a uh, is a very important element which is used in most of the uh, implementation of uh, any integrated circuits okay the silicon element sil silicon part is must okay along with that we have germanium but the main part is silicon okay how silicon is work as a semiconductor pure intrinsic silicon has electrical conductivity between that of conductor and an insulator doping introduces impurities to control the conductivity so here donors are of n type which adds free electrons acceptors are of p type which creates holes by accepting the electrons the junction between n type and p type is essential for creating the semiconductor devices okay next is about wafer processing okay so this is the complete diagram of a soralsky method okay soralsky process for manufacturing the silicon ingots okay so this diagram uh, they might be asking this you should be making a note of it so here what they have done is uh, the amount of silicon is uh, stored inside here and this is the direction of pull that is the amount of silicon to be released that is kept under the wafer okay this wafer indicates that the uh, silicon push okay that is a uh, uh, it uh, controls the amount of silicon present inside the ingot okay so this is the graphite liner graphite liner means uh, it gives the outline to the silicon okay so this is the outer shield this is the molten silicon here okay this part then this is the silicon seed this is the growing crystal and this is the crystal holder the, the crystal holder is uh, it stores the crystals which is uh, grown from the silicon and this is the outer part is the heater part okay first is the starting material wafers are sliced from single crystal silicon ingots using the so soralsky method okay wafer sizes are uh, normally from 75 to 150 millimeter in diameter and it is was less than one millimeter thick okay the so the normal size of a wafer is as mentioned here next is soralsky method that is used for the crystal growth okay a seed crystal is dipped into molten polycrystalline silicon. The seed is slowly pulled and rotated to grow a single crystal ingot. Controlled impurity doping is done during this stage. Okay. Next is wafer slicing and polishing. Diamond blades are used to slice the ingot into thin wafers. Okay. In order to uh, do the to do the slicing of ingot into thin wafers, the since this is the wafer processing, wafer manufacturing. So here. Uh, diamond blades are used in order to slice them out okay at least one side is polished to make a mirror like finish so in this way the wafer manufacturing is done next is about oxidation importance of silicon dioxide 
Silicon dioxide is widely used in IC fabrication as an insulator and a barrier. Types of oxidation, there are mainly two types. One is wet oxidation and dry oxidation. In wet oxidation, it uses water vapor at uh, the temperature around 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius, which is a fast process. Whereas in dry oxidation, it uses pure oxygen. Okay, it, uh, it is approximately ranging in the range of 1200 degrees Celsius, slower but the results in better quality oxide. Okay, so here in case of uh, the fa fabrication process, we often go with the dry oxidation because uh, uh, the temperature would be high and the since the process is slow but the results uh, we need a better quality of oxide so that's why we prefer for dry oxidation okay oxide growth sio2 grows both into and above the silicon surface since this silicon dioxide takes up more space than the origin silicon the oxide layer bulges up okay so this is the simple diagram of a field oxide layer with the, some polysilicon material in it okay you can note it down Next is about selective diffusion and all. So this is, I guess, it's not required. So now directly we'll get to the important part of the video. Okay. Okay. Uh, this, this video is titled by this. That is uh, one important question also would be arriving. Uh, that is CMOS process technology fabrication steps. Okay. How the complete uh, transistor is formed. The fabrication steps, each and everything uh, are mentioned beautifully in this uh, PPT, in this slide here. So this uh, PDF would be available in the description. Okay, go and access it. Okay, module three. So step one, substrate preparation. Okay. So in order to prepare any substrate, the materials used are high purity single crystal silicon. Okay, so this is the silicon substrate you can see here in blue. Okay, this is the single crystal silicon doping. Doping that is phosphorus that is phosphorus impurities are added during the growth of crystals for desired electrical properties in order to achieve the desired electrical properties what what we should we should be doing the phosphorus impurities should be added into the silicon okay so that uh, the electrical properties would be enhanced and the uh, silicon substrate would be acting as the proper impurity next is wafer specification specifications of this wafer are diameter diameter is 75 to 115 millimeter thickness is uh, about uh, about uh, 0.4 millimeter doping concentration is between 10 power 15 per cm cube to 10 power 16 per cm okay so this is the silicon substrate next is thick oxide growth okay so here you see here up above the substrate you could see here th there is one uh, uh, thick oxide here okay which is mentioned in some uh, dark yellow color okay or some golden type of color you could see here that is the silicon dioxide layer which is put upon the silicon substrate okay so that is the thick oxide growth that is a, a thick layer of SiO2 that is approximately one micrometer is grown over the entire wafer surface as you could see in the figure purpose its purpose is that it acts as a protective layer okay for the underlying silicon during the further process okay so this is step two next is photo resist application so above that silicon layer you could see one more orange orange color that is the photo resistive it is a photo sensitive material which which is uniformly spun on to the wafer okay that is it is given above the silicon oxide dioxide layer okay its purpose is it helps to define the areas which uh, which which needs to be modified in the upcoming steps okay so that that layer you could be seeing here in the color orange in this figure next is step 4 uv exposure through a mask okay so we should be uh, passing the ultraviolet rays through an optical mask okay uh, due to that optical mask the reflect the reflecting rays which uh, comes back and some of the reflect uh, some of the uh, reflecting rays would be staying there inside the optical mask and that would be traveled by the photoresistive material and the silicon dioxide in order to enhance the tra transistor material okay so that is used uv exposure through a mask so the wafer is exposed to ultraviolet UV light through a mask. Uh, the mask defines the pattern that is transistor channels, diffusion areas, etc. Only the exposed regions of the photoresist are altered or polymerized. Okay. So you could see here the this this is the UV light passing through the optical mask here, and uh, up below that there is a photoresistive material, silicon dioxide, and the P substrate. Okay. Step five. Is very important step that is etching etching the oxide layer okay this is step five the wafer undergoes etching to remove the exposed photoresist and silicon dioxide underneath 
this process opens the windows in the oxide exposing selected silicon regions okay so what it does is it opens the windows in the oxide so we had one optical mask right so now in order to uh, move further you should be removing that optical mask because the reflecting part and all is done the uh, the rays which needs to be produced in this substrate are already produced and the uh, process is done so we should be removing that mask after that the etching process is taking place so this opens the window in the oxide exposing selected silicon region so you could see here some space in between right that space indicates that the open it opens the window so that the uh, what to say photoresistive material gives some space to the silicon layer in order to expose the selected silicon regions okay so this is the selected silicon region now okay step 6 the thin oxide growth now uh, we have done these things now one more thin oxide that is silicon dioxide layer is uh, fetched above the uh, now the substrate formed in step 5 that is you could see here one uh, gray line this gray thing indicates that thin oxide which i am going which i am talking right now okay this thin oxide growth a thin sio2 layer is grown in the exposed silicon regions as you could see in the figure its purpose is that this oxide layer will act as the gate oxide in the mosfet structure okay so this is the simple gate oxide in the mosfet structure seventh step is polysilicon deposition that is gate patterning polysilicon which is a heavily doped for conductivity is deposited over the entire wafer using chemical vapor deposition okay its a typical thickness is uh, ranging in the uh, in about 1 uh, to 2 micrometer so this polysilicon layer is later patterned to form mosfet gates okay so now after this thin oxide layer this some there will be some space left here right so in that we are adding the polysilicon layer which is mentioned in this red color here okay so this is that polysilicon which is put upon the put above the thin oxide layer okay in order to make a pattern and uh, in order to close this gap okay so that polysilicon is kept step 8 is n type diffusion okay since uh, why n type because we are using the p substrate so silicon substrate is always uh, always carries the majority charge carriers or holes so we know that uh, majority charge carriers or holes in case of uh, uh, positive electrodes so that's why we are using p substrate here so in case of p substrate we are using the n type diffusion okay the wafer is exposed to n type dopant gases for example phosphorus or arsenic at high temperatures its purpose is it forms n type source and drain regions uh, its depth is around uh, 1 micrometer this process is self aligning because the polysilicon gate and surrounding oxides act as the masks okay so this n type diffusion you see here what they have done closely the thick oxide n diffusion is taking place so what or what they have done is uh, in this part where the uh, where the polysilicon and thick oxide layers are intersecting with each other that part the diffusion is taking place the diffusion means that part layer is been removed and it's sucked inside so there would be some alteration space provided here okay so that layer is called as depletion layer okay so see here these two layers are there right n diffusion is taking place and these two layers are mentioned as depletion layers okay step 9 contact cuts a new thick oxide layer is grown again this oxide is selectively etched with the help of photoresist to open the contact holes these holes expose polysilicon gates and source drain regions for electrical connection okay so this uh, thick oxide layer the contact cuts you see here the contact cuts have been made here in these uh, two regions in order to form this uh, thin oxide layer step 10 metallization a layer of metal usually aluminum is deposited over the wafer uh, which is nearly 1 micrometer thick this metal is patterned and etched to to form the required interconnection between the components okay so metallization is done uh, wherever we have the contact cuts here so here in this case we had three contact cuts that is 1 2 3 in order to go for, with these three contact cuts uh, you could be telling that we would be following uh, forming the three terminals in the transistor so those three terminals uh, are uh, you all might be knowing it that is source gate and drain so with that uh, three contact cuts we are uh, doing the metallization process okay so these in uh, in black color this indicates that these are the metal contacts okay metal contacts in order to form the three terminals okay so with this the complete uh, cmos process technology is done and like this we are having the thin diffusion layer 
polysilicon layer and we have one uh, thin oxide layer thin and thick both oxide layers metal contacts contact cuts with that we have seen the three terminals here are formed that is source gate and drain okay so this is the final structure of a transistor in the prosimos process technology okay so these 10 steps you should be remembering guys okay neatly it is mentioned in this uh, pdf here okay if you write this much easily if this question comes for 10 marks you would be getting 10 out of 10 okay so please uh, note it note this down very very important guys okay so yeah that's all for this video uh, the cmos technologies and all we are going to see in the next video so that's all guys so hope you understood something from this video like share subscribe to our channel keep supporting us uh, please mention your comments in the comment sections about uh, how the how was this video and uh, we are going to provide upcoming videos in a short amount of time okay thanks for watching